All right, in this video, we're going to look at function operations. We're going to look at how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide functions. And just so you, that you have an understanding of how this video is laid out, what I have is I have two functions. I have this red function, f of x, which is this linear function. And then I have this green function, g of x, which is this square root function. And what we're going to do is we're going to do our function operations. We're going to look how to do them with tables first. Okay, we're going to how to do them with graphs second. And then we'll learn how to do them with equations third. But in all three of these representations, we have the same functions, meaning this red function right here, f of x, its function values are shown here in the table, and here is the graph of that same function. These are not three different problems. These are three representations of the same two equations. I want us to understand that going in. Now, first off, let's start with the table. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add, uh, do this function sum first, f plus g of 4. And so the first thing we need to know is this representation is the same thing as saying f of 4 plus g of 4. And so what we do there is we're going to look up f of 4 in our table, meaning what is the value of the f function when x is 4. And if I look at when x is 4, the f function has a value of 9. And then we're going to add it to g of 4, meaning what's the value of our g function when its x value is 4. Well, when x is 4, the g function has a value of 2. That means that our answer here is 11. The sum, this function sum, is 11. Now, let's do the same thing with f minus g of 4. And uh, so, once again, our first thing we need to understand is this is the same thing as, as saying f of 4 minus g of 4. And we kind of already figured out what those two function values were. We did it in the previous problem. So we already know that f of 4 is 9 and g of 4 is 2. So now the only difference is we are subtracting those to get 7. To do multiplication, now we're doing f of g of 1, which is f of 1 times g of 1. So now we're just going to find these two function values and we're going to multiply them. So to find f of 1, we're going to look in our table for when x is 1, and we're going to say that, oh, the value of the f function when x is 1 is 3. In other words, this is the y value when x is 1. So f of 1 is 3. And then g of 1 is going to be 1. So now we're just multiplying those to get 3. Lastly, we're going to do function division. This is the same thing as saying what is f of 0 and dividing it by g of 0. So to find f of 0, we're going to look at when what is the value of f of the f function when x is 0. So when x is 0, the f function has a value of 1. And the g function, when x is 0, has a value of 0. Well, here, if you look, 1 divided by 0 is not 0. 1 divided by 0 is undefined. So this quotient is undefined, because anytime you divide by 0, you're going to have an undefined value. So now we looked at all four function operations using a table. Let's look at how to do those same function operations using a graph. Now, the graph is going to be basically the same idea. I just remind you that this red function is our f of x, and that this blue function is our g of x. But now, just instead of the table just handing us the values, we're going to have to figure out how to interpret this. So to start with a, we have f plus g of 1, which from the previous slide you saw means f of 1 plus g of 1. And so in order to find f of 1, we're looking for what is the value of the f function when x is 1. So if I'm looking at when x is 1, here's where x is 1 right here. Our f function, when x is 1, has a value of 3. Because the ordered pair, 1, 3, is on the graph. Then we're going to do the same thing with our g function. We're going to say, okay, what's the value of g when x is 1? And so if I look right here, here's the ordered pair, 1, 1. When x is 1, g of x is 1. So, in other words, this value right here is just 1. So, if I do 3 plus 1, that's going to be 4. Now, um, since we're using the same x value, I'm going to skip over to this multiplication problem, since those function values are fresh on our mind. We're going to do f of 1 times g of 1. And so, we've already found out that f of 1 is 3, and g of 1 is 1. So, whenever I multiply those, we get 3. 
I just kind of skip from here to here because these are both problems where we're using a one for our x value. So it would have been the same process here, except we're just going to multiply those two function values. Now, let's look at the negative two example. This is going to be f of negative two minus g of negative two. Now, if I find f of negative two, I'm going to go to my f function, which is this red one, and I'm going to go to negative two. And you see that right here, it looks like when x is negative 2, f of x, or f of negative 2, would be negative 3. Then we're going to subtract our g of x value. And so if I go over here to negative 2, you see that this square root function doesn't really come over here to the negative. It doesn't have a function value when x is negative. Um, it's undefined over here. And so that means that g of negative 2 is undefined. And so if I'm subtracting a real number minus an undefined value, that means our answer is just an undefined value. I can't subtract, I can't do the subtraction right here to get a real number answer. So let's look at our last one for, the, for this slide. We have f, f of 0 over g of 0. And I think this is the same example we did last time uh, on the last slide, just a matter of getting the, the numbers from the graph. So let me kind of get rid of our other lines. So if I'm looking right here, f of 0 is somewhere along this line, right here along the y-axis, because that's where x is 0. So f, f of 0 is going to be that point right there, which is really just a y-coordinate of 1. g of 0 is right here at the origin. It's the order pair 0, 0. So for the g function, when x is 0, y is 0. So this is, once again, 1 over 0, we talked about that in the last slide. If you're dividing by 0, that's going to be undefined as well. So here we have a couple of examples of some undefined um, values. So here's our last slide, and now we're going to do these same operations, one of each type, with the actual equations themselves. Okay, And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rewrite this first one, f of 8 plus g of 8. And so to find f of 8, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute an 8 in for x in this function. So that's going to be 2 times 8 plus 1. And then we're going to add that to g of 8. Well, well, g of 8 is this right here. It's the square root of, of x. Oops. So it's going, to be, it's going to be the square root of 8. So whenever I do this math, we're going to have 16 plus 1 plus the square root of 8. Now, in this situation, it doesn't really simplify nicely. I'd be okay if you left it there. I'd be okay. I'm not going to talk about how to simplify this radical, but if you wanted to simplify it to there, you could. Or if you just wanted to convert that to a, uh, to a decimal, I'd be okay with that. So, um, let's see. As a decimal, that would be... That would be roughly 19.83. Um, so, me personally, I'd be okay with any of those values, or any of those representations of the answer, I should say. Now, let's come up here and let's do the same thing with subtraction. So, for this problem, we are going to do f of 9, and then we're going to subtract g of 9. And so, to do f of 9, I'm just going to substitute a 9 into my f of x function right here. So, we have 2 times 9 plus 1, and then we're going to subtract our g of x function with the 9 substituted in. And so here this becomes 18 plus 1, but then you're going to subtract the root of 9, and we got a little bit nicer numbers here. So this becomes 19 minus 3, which is 16. To do the multiplication, we are just going to do f of negative 3, and then we're going to multiply that by g of negative 3. So to do f of negative 3, we have 2 times negative 3 plus 1. Once again, I'm just getting this from my f of x function down here. And then we're going to multiply that by, I guess I should use parentheses there, by g of negative 3, which is the square root of negative 3. I'm just taking this negative 3 and substituting it in for the x. Now over here, we have negative 6 plus 1. And then we're multiplying that by the root of negative 3. Well, let's just kind of stop right there because this square root of negative 3, 
that's going to be um, that's going to be like a non-real answer. Our function is undefined at that value. So um, we are just going to say um, non-real answer. I would also accept undefined because our function is not defined. It doesn't have an exact value when x is negative 3. And let's do this last one right here. Let's do f of 4. Actually, I'll keep my color-codedness going. I'm doing good on that. F of 4, and then we're going to divide by... Oops, no, I'm not doing good. I did F in red the whole time. F of 4, and then we're going to divide that by um, G of 4. So to do that math, we're just going to do 2 times 4 plus 1 over the square root of 4. I'm just substituting a 4 into both of these values. And then I just ran out of room, so I'm going to... Actually, I might be able to squeeze this in right here. 8 plus 1 is 9. The square root of 4 is 2. So that would be our answer. Our answer to that last one would be 9 halves or 4.5.